So as we just said, the two methods used in the translation of foreign currency financial statements, the first one is called the temporal method. It is also called remeasurement. The second one is called current rate method. It is co also called translation. So when is each method used? Um, we have a foreign subsidiary and the foreign subsidiary is using the local currency. We have the parent firm. Parents, the currency used, uh, used by the parent firm is called the reporting currency. And then we also have something called functional currency, which we are going to talk about what it is in a minute. But let's first look at there are three currencies here, local currency, reporting currency, and something called the functional currency. The step from the local currency to the functional currency, this step is called the remeasurement. And this is where we use the temporal method. And then from the functional currency to reporting currency, this step is called translation. It is where we use the current rate method. So actually, if you look at this in more detail, actually you will find that there can be divided into three situations. The first situation is if what if when the functional currency is the foreign subsidiary's local currency? So if these two currencies are the same currency, then we only need one step. Which step is it? Yeah, it is the translation, the current rate method. So this is the first, first possibility. And then the second possibility is what if the functional currency exactly it is the parent firm's reporting currency? So under this situation, we don't need translation, we only need remeasurement. So only the temporal method is used. And then in the third situation, what if the, the functional currency is not the subsidiary's local currency, it is also not the parent, parent's firm's reporting currency. So under this situation, we need both. We need to first do the remeasurement to remeasure the foreign subsidiary's local currency into the functional currency. Then we need to do the translation, translate it and from the functional currency and to, into the parent's firm's reporting currency. So those are three situations. However, if you look at our book, our book only covers the first two situations. It didn't really present the methods this way, but you should keep in mind that actually there's a third situation, which is if the functional currency is neither the local, the foreign subsidiary's reporting currency, nor the parent firm's, uh, sorry, it's neither the foreign subsidiary's local currency nor the parent firm's reporting currency. Then we, used, we need to use both of the methods. Uh, it's not mentioned in the book, but it is actually um, yeah, what is happening. You should be aware of this situation. So then what is functional currency? Functional currency is the primary currency of the foreign entity's operating environment. So as you can see here, actually in most of the situations, it, should be like if it is a Japanese subsidiary operating in Japan, the functional currency is the Japanese yen. Um, and here are some indicators of what the functional cur currency is. So you need to look at from cash flow, uh, where the major market is, uh, under which currency the cost is incurred, the financing, interactive transactions, so all of those. You can just take a look uh, on your own. So, uh, and then this is what I just mentioned, the three situations. So foreign subsidiaries, local currency is the functional currency. Parents from reporting currency is the functional currency, the first, second, and the third, which is neither. And this is not required by the textbook. So that's why you, you don't see it at all on your textbook. Uh, 